What's up, you guys? Sean Ross at Fightful.com here with a name. You know, somebody I've been trying to interview for quite a while, Neil Dashwood. Look at the beautiful background. How you doing? Coming at you live from Negril, Jamaica. I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? I don't think that I realized how much I miss traveling until I go to your Instagram. <laughs> I give people FOMO. You do, you do. You're all yeah. over the place. Mm -hmm. I saw you battling a monkey recently. Oh, that was actually an older video when I was in Bali. But yeah, the monkey, it fooled me. Um, <laughs> sucked me in and then bit my hand. So that was fun. That's a tale of friendship. You can never let yourself get too close, I guess, sometimes. But, yeah, that's true. But you're traveling. We, we see it on, on Taste of Tenille, your channel as well. I, it, it had taken a bit of a break, but we've seen you come back. You've done some more cooking videos. You've done some more travel videos. How has that been for you? Because this is an unusual time for a lot of people. Yeah, so um, obviously I'm still kind of trying to live my life to the fullest, which is, you know, anyone that follows me knows that I love to travel and I love my food and the adventures and being outdoors. And those things just make me happy um, and make me energetic and better as a person. So those things I always try to do. Obviously, um, things are a little different right now, but you know, if you follow the right protocols, um, it is still possible to travel, um, obviously, with a proof of negative test results and social distancing and all those good things. So lots of sanitizing masks, everything in public. So yeah, I'm still trying to live my life to the fullest and uh, experience the places that are welcoming, welcoming tourism and um, working with the resorts and things I do for my travel lifestyle influencing work. So yeah, living it up and loving it. Has that helped you adapt to really what's going on out here? Because I mean, for a lot of people, they, they don't really even know the steps to take in that type of thing, but you seem well adapted at all that. Like you, you know the steps, you know the procedures, you know all that. Yeah, I mean, it, I, there's a lot of work that goes into these trips, a lot of um, background work and planning. Um, and I've, you've, I've got the beach hair going on. <laughs> um, but yeah, so people just think like it's, it's easy or it's always fun. You know, there's a lot of hard work that goes into planning these trips and getting um, the footage and, and all that background stuff. Um, yeah, I've, I've kind of gone a bit off track. What was the specific question? I mean, like, has that, how has it been adapting to this for you? I mean, obviously there are way more hurdles right now than there were seven yeah. months ago. So that's what I was going to say is, um, I do a lot of research before I go on, you know, where might be good to travel, um, if they're welcoming tourism or not some places, kind of need it you know they thrive and they function off uh, people coming into the country so um i'm definitely doing a lot of research on where's good to go where to stay away from um what expectations there are when you go to a certain place so for instance here in jamaica i had to take a test before i came i had to then get an authorization and then once you get here you still have to have temperature checks and if you have any symptoms you stay within a specific area so there's lots to it you know so um, and you know, a lot, it's a lot different than normal because a lot of the hotels are operating on, um, smaller staff, uh, limited menus, um, all of those things, you know, that it's, it's, it's different for sure, but I find it very enjoyable and peaceful, relaxing because, um, there's not as many people around. So it's better for me. <laughs> all time favorite travel destination. That's something I got to know from you from somebody who has uh, done as much as you have all-time favorite um i have a few it's not just one i would say i'm gonna list i loved austria and switzerland and new zealand stunning all of them and my favorite would probably be iceland because it's just like it's not like anywhere else i've ever been basically speaking of branching out i mentioned taste of tenille earlier you were one of the first people to kind of branch out use your own name to do things like that. And that's been a hot topic in wrestling lately. Like people got to use their own name yeah. and, and do that. You were ahead of the curve there. What motivated you to do that and to make sure that you didn't use any IP or anything like that? It was on your back, your personality and yourself. That's interesting. Cause I don't think anyone's ever really brought that up to me before. 
Um, but I definitely wanted to make sure that I was in charge of I was in charge of my own career and where things were going and that I wasn't going to be told what to do or how to do it or to anyone to, to dictate my path, basically. Um, so I tried to uh, make it known early on what my real name was and what my uh, passions are outside of wrestling too because I thought it was important. Not only do fans appreciate being uh, a part of your life and like being let in, um, you know, there's more things they can relate to. There's things that can help them. It's not just all about wrestling. Um, but yeah, I am my own person and it was important for me to show that and to kind of show that there's more for me to achieve in this world, you know? I think taste of Neil rolls off the tongue a little bit better than like eating with Emma too. I mean, it's, it's, it's a better, it's a better brand. That was name. never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So was, was that ever anything that companies have asked you to, to kind of co-opt, so to speak? We've seen that with some people's stuff, like a company will come along and be like, okay, this is taken off. I, I want it to be ours instead of hers. Yeah, um, as far as Taste of Tennille? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah, so I've definitely um, been... I actually have a, like a pitch for a whole TV show and this whole thing, bringing it to life. But right now I kind of am doing like an evolved travel vlog kind of version of Taste of Tennille. Yeah. Um, to, you know, to show everyone... Because people have no idea of the stuff I do on these trips that I go on. And, I'm, you know, I'm working with brands and hotels. And it's what I do. It's like for a work, for a job, you know, and... So I like to be able to kind of show everyone that part of my life. Um, but yeah, um, I, I keep going off track again. <laughs> That's okay. We were, um, we were kind of talking about but, the brand and, and how you've you've adapted it and changed it in a pitch that you had. Yeah, so uh, the I guess the big picture is to, to bring it to life on a big screen, you know, on a whatever it is, like a Netflix or a Amazon Prime or a... It's just a cable TV show, you know, Discovery, the travel. One of those, like, uh, basically living vicariously through Tennille is basically the whole idea around it. And I've, I've got a pitch for a show. I've spoken with production companies. Um, brands reach out to me all the time, you know, with whether it's with things to do with, with um, health and fitness, clothing, uh, different resorts, places around the world, tourism boards, all of that. And I welcome that, you know, it's they can reach out to me at booktoneal at gmail.com. Nice. <laughs> but I mean, that's like part of my life and um, things I welcome, but um, I haven't fi found that specific group or people to bring that to life the way I envision it. So I'm not, while I will say I'm not the most patient person, I am waiting because that is such a big deal to me to have the show that I want. And that's like the, a biggest, probably the biggest goal for me is to have my show. So that's something I'm working on and just doing the blogging stuff on YouTube in the meantime until I can do it the way I want and bring it to life. I was so happy to see it come back and then with a bit of an altered format because I've seen you travel on your Instagram and now we see it play out via those vlogs and you're still doing the food stuff, which is incredible. I think that's, that's really awesome. Uh, Thank you. As we wrap up, how has it been adjusting your schedule over the last few years? Because it's changed drastically from being on the road all the time to being on the independent circuit and traveling all the time to where the last couple of years, whether it be injuries or what we're experiencing now, it's, it's, I don't want to say your travel has slowed down, but it, I'm sure it's changed a lot. Oh yeah. It's, it's way, it, it has slowed down really. Um, and well, I'm definitely doing a, a, as much travel as I can right now. It's obviously, um, it's not as frequent as I would normally do it. And I'm definitely taking precautions and, um, you know, with the schedule with impact too, it's definitely different than what I was used to. So uh, it's a huge change, but like I was saying, I definitely take a lot of like me time and um, that has helped with that. So I definitely just kind of, kind of getting in touch with myself, learning a lot about myself, studying a lot. Um, you know, I do a lot of uh, reading and research into health and fitness related things. And I'm actually going to be taking a course um, to become an integrated health practitioner so that I can nice. not only be helping myself, but be helping other people eventually too. 
um, with health coaching, basically. Um, so I find it also fascinating learning about diets and basically how much what I put into my body makes me who I am, makes me function how I am and, you know, leads to all kinds of things. So, yeah, it's been good for me mentally and physically to have a little bit of a downtime and, um, and then, yeah, go at it when it's time. Has the fact that you are so adept at cooking and knowing what you are making, has that helped you like as an athlete, as a performer, whether it be staying in shape or any, anything like that? Yeah, for sure. I, it's, it's always been important for me, but I think more so now when I realize the impact it has on our health, <clears throat> um, it's important for everyone to be making sure they take care of them, their mental health. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, I noticed it when I put different, if I if I'm eating bad, for instance, for a period of time, I'll feel it, you know. So it's all like I definitely pride myself in um, how I look and how I feel, and kind of trying to learn as much as I can about that, so that I can live to my fullest all the time.